this is where we left the uh, Proving Ground demo. And I was just starting to put in some texture overlays. So we had done a lot to adjust the lighting of the creature to match the situation. By doing that on a non-destructive layer, this is what it looks like in normal mode. This is what it looks like in overlay mode. That allows us to be pretty strong with our dodging and burning. It also allows us to take the opacity down overall on it. Which sometimes when you come back to it, you had all these good intentions for how you dodged and burned, but then sometimes it's a little heavy handed. So I'm going to take it down from 100%, maybe to about 85. And that looks pretty good. And there might be other areas where when you come back to it, you might see you want more. But I like how that gives me the, the dark shadow underneath the tail. That really works. It helps give kind of a core shadow down the front of the creature, which makes sense with the lighting. Because remember, I did some direct burning on the, the glacier here. So now how to kind of sell everything all together beyond just the direct adjustments, the color adjustments we made, the lighting adjustments we've made. Texture overlays can really help with the atmosphere. So I went to Pixabay and I found images with this kind of cold, misty texture. This is a good one. I downloaded them with the largest resolution I could. And to do get the largest option, I went ahead and just signed in with my Gmail. And I take them from my downloads folder. And I move them into my assignment folder for proving ground number one. And so these are the different texture overlays I thought might be useful. And they're all pretty different. And I'll show you how those can help make our image more believable. One of them just shows snowfall, you know, a blizzard. And it would be great if this was in the Arctic and there were glaciers or just clear sky. But unfortunately, this is amongst a bunch of trees and some power lines. So we want to be aware of that. Here is very dramatically lit kind of wind-swept, snowy mountains. This is an underwater image, which gives me a really strong blue color and gives me those particles in the atmosphere. And so I'm going to equate this to being kind of a, a sun that's really behind the clouds and being filtered through a heavy particle-filled atmosphere of the, of the snow. And then we have these kind of misty mountains, which I just downloaded. And I think this is going to be useful for the breath coming out of my creature, because it's a warm-blooded creature in a cold environment. So I take those, I put them onto my image, and then I try different modes. So this is after I've erased out. This is the dramatic mountainsides. And I'm going to take its opacity down in normal mode. And you'll see that it gives me this windswept look. That snow being kind of softening, especially the, the atmosphere. Now I might want less of that in the foreground. So I can take my big eraser at a low opacity, soft edged. And I can erase a little bit more of it away, especially in the foreground. So now that mistiness is more helpful in the background. Because I'm not trying to hide my creature. I'm trying to make it all more believable. Okay, next, I have the blizzard on normal at 
I erased out certain areas. I even moved a chunk of ice from it. Whoops, erasing from the wrong layer. And I can continue to do that. But this I want mostly in the foreground because that's where the big snow is going to fall the most. So I erased a lot of it from the top. And then I'm going to keep it on a different blending mode. And I think I was using pin light for this. And you can see that gives me snow. Now snow you would usually expect to, to be moving. So this is something just for proving ground number one, but it might be an element that I, I play with animating later on. But you wouldn't want to add snow into assignment one because you would expect snow to be moving like a figurative element. Softening some. Okay, next I have this underwater element, which on normal mode at 100% looks like this, but if I take it way down to just 15%, I like the, the blue tones it gives to everything. And then if I change it from normal mode to overlay mode, that gives me a little bit more drama. So now what do I need? I'm going to lighten maybe some of that blizzard. Doesn't totally obscure my creature, but we've got some big chunks, so those are nice. Now I want to play with this new texture overlay. And this I'm going to use in a much more targeted way. So just like I moved some snowflakes around, because I didn't like what they were covering, with this one, once it comes in, I don't really want any of the trees. I just want the breath here. So just like when we've been compositing in the past, I'm just going to take a loose selection with my lasso of this kind of breathy cloud. My lasso has a three pixel feather. And then I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate that selection onto a new layer. Then I can just delete where it came from. And I get this chunk. Then I'm going to use my soft eraser, a little bit smaller. at a 100% opacity because I want to get rid of those hard edges. And I'm just using a mouse, but I can also use a, a stylus. Because these gaseous forms in the atmosphere whether it's snowflakes, whether it's breath, they are not hard edged. So now how do I blend this into the image and where do I put it? Well, I want it to feel like he's breathing from his beak and then it's trailing off into the atmosphere. So I can warp it, I can move it, but the first step might be to take its opacity down. So I'll take it down to about 50%. Then 
and move it up around his beak. It's a big dust cloud. And then I'm going to hit Command T. Should be Control T in um, in Photo P. Right click it and warp it. And then I can channel and shape the breath a little bit. Like so, leaving some empty space around the beak. Hit return, get that warp set, try it. At 100%, you can see what it's doing. Soften any edges that need to be softened with my 100% eraser. And then I'm going to take the opacity of the eraser down. Get rid of some of that mountain texture that's coming through. So I just have the breath elements, both the lights and the darts. And now I can take its opacity down and maybe try it at different blending modes. So these lightening modes, or these, yeah, they lighten. So all of these darken, those aren't going to be what I want. All of these lighten in different ways, but some of them are pretty extreme. And then all the ones underneath that are my favorite ones, which do a combination of both. They overlay it. or they pin light it, and it seems like hard light is the best option there. So now I've got some breath, and now I can kind of selectively erase that and blend that. As it goes over my uh, my sun adds more atmosphere coming from the mouth of the creature. Now, what if I feel like I need more of it around the beak? So you know where it's coming from. Well, I can just take some internal compositing and take the shape of the air that's coming out of the beak. Take a big chunk of that and then command J, duplicate it onto its own layer. And then change that to normal mode and increase its opacity. So I can get a little puff that's a lot stronger near the source. And I can stretch it too. I can do command T, I can warp it and kind of put it right there in the beak. And I was using hard light before. In this case, I might use lighten. And then just selectively erase away. If you overdo it, you can always go back in your history states. So this is a pretty extreme environment. And now all of those texture overlays are doing a fair amount to camouflage my creature. But that works for my story and my creature. And so everything has a reason, the breath, 